In the last video, we talked about UK, how Rishi Sunak's government wants to restrict immigration, especially the international students in the upcoming years. So many people ask me this question, is it actually possible in case of Canada as well? Both UK and Canada have seen record level immigrations in 2022 and of course increasing population means that it is putting pressure on the government services, on the healthcare, on the housing supplies and on many other services as well. So is there a possibility that Canada may stop immigration? Okay, stop might be a very big word. Canada may restrict immigration in the upcoming years, let it be for international students or for permanent residents. So in this video, we'll try to analyze this question, how UK and Canada are similar, but still very different. We'll talk about the future of immigration in Canada in the year 2023, 24 and the year onwards. Is there a chance that Canada is going to restrict immigration in the years to come? Now you might feel that both UK and Canada are kind of similar countries because both of them are a part of uh, the Western world. Um, they are part of the G7. They have, you know, similar language. There might be many other similarities between the two countries, but things change when we talk of the strategy and need for immigration in these two countries. So we will try to understand this through three different aspects. Number one, through the geography and the population. Number two, the political willingness for immigration. And number three, the financial need. So starting with the geography and the population, which is probably the most crucial factor when it comes to immigration. So if you try to compare Canada and UK, you'll see that UK is 41 times smaller than Canada. Canada is actually the second largest country in the world. And it's very huge, while its population is very less. While in UK, you have around 68 million people. In Canada, you have only 38 million people. So while Canada is 41 times larger than UK, its population is almost half of UK. However, 90% of the people actually live in certain areas, but still there is a room for so many people out there. While in the case of UK, it is already very populated and when its population increases, it becomes a problem for them. Also, Canada has a bigger percentage of aging population. So they try to give more importance to people who are younger in age. For example, in the expert entry system, they give more points to people who are under 30 and they reduce the points as the age increases. So in the case of Canada, it is not about the want, but it is their need to get young people who can give their government more taxes and of course add to the labor market. Okay, point number two about the political willingness. So mind it, UK has never been an immigrant dominated population. But here in Canada, you would see that a big percentage of people actually immigrated. Maybe they immigrated or their father's generation or their grandfather's generation actually immigrated from some part of the world. So Canada is a country of immigrants and the political willingness also depicts the same in their manifestos. They give importance to the immigration policies. If we talk of the manifestos of the Liberal Party or the Conservative Party or the NDP, you'll, you'd see similar context in all these uh, manifestos. However, people somehow believe that conservatives are anti-immigration while liberals are pro-immigration. But I made a detailed video about it uh, when there were elections in Canada that even if you check the uh, promises and the manifestos, of the conservative party you would see that there are a lot of improvements that they want in the immigration system they don't want to limit or restrict immigration instead they need immigration and that's why they also understand it so all the major parties in canada actually support immigration you would always find that their manifestos are talking about improving the processes reducing the processing times making things more streamlined because that is a big pain for the population of uh, immigrants that is living here in Canada. While new immigrants are adding to the Canadian population, it is definitely putting a stress on the housing supplies, on the healthcare, on the education system. But Canada is quite used to it. Everywhere you go, you would see labor shortages. So Canada needs more people. Also, 
They have already defined the immigration targets for the next three years, that is 23, 24 and 25. And in every year we see that they want to increase the number of uh, PR residents in Canada. In the next three years, they target to get 1.45 million new permanent residents in Canada. And also because of the labor shortages, we have seen that the government actually is encouraging, they're changing their policies that the, uh, you know, the students, international students who are limited to work for 20 hours can actually work for more hours. They want international students to get the permanent residency of Canada because now all these students are a product of their own education system and they trust them even more. However, in the case of UK, we have seen that uh, the UK government, the Rishi Sunak's government actually has been trying to limit immigration. In the case of Canada, the political willingness is to increase immigration even to higher levels. Okay, the next point is about the money, the financial need. So both Canada and the UK actually rely heavily on the immigrants. However, Rishi Sunak's government is planning to restrict international students but it is a big concern that the fees that they actually get from international students, how they would be able to replace that financial loss. In the last video, I talked about it. UK experts are also saying that if they restrict the international students, then some UK universities or colleges might even get bankrupt. And similarly, in the case of Canada as well, the Canadian universities and colleges also get billions of dollars in fee and revenue from the international students. So they would never want this big of a financial loss. Apart from the finance part, I also talked about the labor market shortage. Although we're talking about recession, although we're talking about inflation, but there's a huge labor market shortage out there in the market, whether you go in the healthcare sector or in the education sector or for truck drivers or for food industry, everywhere you'll find there is a huge labor shortage out there. And not just the permanent residents, but the international students actually help to fill this labor shortage. That's the reason why they lifted that restriction of 20 hour work limit for international students. So guys, those were just some of the points why UK actually wants to restrict immigration, but Canada rather wants to increase immigration. They have that in their immigration plans as well. So all those people who had this question in mind that now, Canada might follow the footsteps of UK when it comes to immigration. I hope there's no doubt anymore. Canada is an immigration pro country. It's a land of immigrants. And if you want to be rest assured about one thing is that Canada is only going to increase immigration in the years to come. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any comments, any feedback, please put them down in the comment section below. Also, do not forget to click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.